Today I want to show you how we can take photos into Cinema 4D and turn them into 3D scenes. We'll touch on some basic modeling techniques, dive into a bit of camera projection and end up with a scene that's ready for us to start animating. This is a great way to add some seam... Don't scratch. Bit of an itch. <laughs> Don't scratch. Bit of an itch. This is a great way to add some seemingly complex visuals into your scene and give your photos a whole other dimension. Let's take a look at what I'm talking about in action and then we'll dive in and see how it comes together. So we've just had a look at the animation that we're going to end up with today. We're going to use this incredible photo from a photographer named Ellie Costi and she's done a great abandoned series which I'll link down below and you can have a look through the whole thing. We're going to use this photo because it's a nice simple setup. We've got a bit of foreground here with our open windows and we can see through to the back there and we've got a couple of doors on the ground there that we can play with. So let's dive straight in. So I'm just going to open up a new scene here and first up let's throw in a camera. So I'm just going to reposition our camera so it looks similar to what would have been taken for our photo. And then we're going to apply to our camera a camera projection tag. We can throw that image reference straight into our image field here. And you can see we've got a couple of options down the bottom here. We can, we can change it so we can view our full image or we can match either the width or height. And that's based on the dimensions here of our viewport. You can see when I click off this camera projection, we no longer see, we no longer see that projection of the image. So there's a couple of things we need to do. Now the camera projection tool is great actually figuring out what sort of camera was used in the scene. But for us, we're just gonna cheat this a little bit here. So what I'm gonna do is come over to our calibrate tag and just come straight down to create camera mapping tag and create background object. And you can see that instantly adds two extra things here to our scene. We've got the background so we can permanently see it and it's given us this tag on our camera, which I'm just gonna create a null and throw that tag onto that as well. And I'll show you what that's gonna do in a second. So the next thing we need to do is start building up this image. So the first thing I'm gonna do is grab a plane and just reposition its size here a bit and pull it back. And what I'm gonna start with is creating the inside of, of our window frame. So I'm just so I'm just repositioning our plane here, just so it's matching the size there of the bottom panel of the inside of the window. And we're just gonna change our width and height segments to one. And you can see now when I drop that plane into the null, it now takes on that texture from our camera mapping tag. So we're just gonna do a little bit of modeling here. I'm just gonna grab both of our, gonna grab both of our edge splines here, hit D for extrude, give it a zero extrude and hit apply. And then I'm just gonna pull these straight up to about where it looks like we've got the top of our panel here. Now I'm just gonna fix this up a little bit. You can see our geometries, you can see our image isn't quite square. So our geometry is not quite working 100%. So we just need to fix this to our eye. So I'm just clicking on different edges here and just repositioning them just so it looks about right. Now I'm gonna do the same thing here with this edge. I'm gonna hit D for extrude, give it a zero offset, and now I can just pull that across to about where it meets that other edge. I'm gonna jump out of our camera for a second, because what we wanna do is not have extra points here. I don't want any of this overlapping. So I'm just gonna reposition this a bit more neatly so we've got our corners at the right point here. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab our point selection. I'm gonna grab our rectangle selection again so we can just grab all the points on this corner. And then what I'm gonna do is right click and I'm gonna go weld. And you can see when I now click on those points, it now makes it one point. We're gonna do that exact same step on the other side, rectangle selection tool, grab those points, weld them together, and that's looking good. Now we've got one piece of geometry here. If I turn off my background, you can see what we've created so far. Now, of course, there's always a hundred ways to skin a cat. We could have got this, we could have got this many different ways, but this is how we've done it, and it's a bit of fun. So let's dive back into our camera. We'll turn on our, we'll turn back on our background so we can see what we're working with here. And because we're working in the foreground here, what I'm going to do now is pull out the walls. So we've, you can see we've got a couple of open window panels here. We're going to ignore them for a second and just create the wall that's behind them. So I'm just gonna create a selection of all the edges on the inside of our window panel here. Jump out of my camera for a second so I can make sure I'm getting all these edges. And all I'm gonna do now is scale these out. So hit T for scale, and, and, we, and we're just gonna pull these beyond our image for a second. We'll tidy this up in just a moment. And you can see now we're capturing that whole foreground of our image here. 
So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna grab this top edge, pull it down to about the top of our image, doesn't matter if we're catching a little bit extra, and then do the same with the bottom here. Nice, that's looking good. It's looking a bit funky because of our specular, so I'm just gonna grab both of our textures here and just turn off their reflectance, just so we can see our image a bit clearer. All right, the next thing we're gonna have a play with is creating these, is the window shutters here. So I'm gonna do these really simply so you can see how easy this is to create. I'm gonna grab ourselves a cube, pull it over to about where it looks right. And I'm just gonna amend our size here. You can see we need to be far taller, so I'm gonna scale up Y, move it up a little bit so it's about center of our window there. Give it a bit more height, and you can see now we're gonna to have to and now we just need to shrink this down on X and then we'll scale this a little bit along Z. Let's hit R for rotate. Rotate it a little bit so it's about the same angle as our shutter there. Pull it over and you can see we're penetrating that wall. So we just need to pull it up a bit. Rotate it a little bit more, I think. We might even need to scale this up a bit. So you can see I'm just doing this by I just so we capturing that whole shutter here. So I scaled that up and I'm just gonna pull this down on Y. And then we're just gonna drop that cube in underneath our null. So we're just gonna drop that cube underneath our null and that, and that just as our plane did, will take on the texture for, that we've set up through that camera. And nice, you can see how easy that was to capture that window. So we're just gonna do the exact same on the other side here. Grab ourselves another cube We'll scale it along Y, pull it up a little bit. We'll just reposition this one so we're happy with it. So you can see how easy it was to just use a cube to capture that image, but this time we're gonna add a little bit more geometry, do a little bit extra modeling, just so we're getting a little bit more detail. So I'm just gonna find our final position here, just amending our size and position, just so it looks right to the eye. And this time what we're gonna do is add in those window details. So you can see that's looking good. We've dropped that into our null. It's now taking on that texture. You can see maybe we just need to scale this down a little bit more and that's looking good. Now, once we're happy with this, while with our cube selected, we'll hit C to make it editable. And before we can start adding in those windows, we need to create some cuts. So I'm gonna grab our knife tool by hitting KL. And what I'm doing here, I'm just making cuts right where, I'm just making cuts right where the timber is on our joins there. So I'm just doing this top and bottom and also on the sides there, cause you can see we've got these panels on the sides as well. And then what I'm gonna do is grab our polygon selection, grab those inside polygons, but holding down shift while I select them, hitting D for extrude, hitting apply. And now we can just pull these back into the model a bit. Now we don't wanna penetrate that back wall so you can see we can just pull this back. And, and won't, it won't change much in the viewport but we've just given that a bit extra detail and it looks quite nice. And that'll look nice when you add extra lights and you have things bouncing in and around this scene. So now we just need to set up our background to really give our image some depth here. So just as we did our wall, we're gonna do this really simply. We're gonna grab ourselves another plane and I'm just gonna pull this down a little bit. Let's scale this out so it's nice and big. And what I wanna do is just pull this beyond our window a little bit here. Nice. And then we'll just pull this down. We might even need to jump out of our camera here to see how deep we need to go. But about there is looking good. You can see we're hitting that edge of that back wall there. Let's drop that plane under our null as well. And let's spin around. Let's have a bit of a look. Let's move this over a bit. And what we're gonna do is just scale this out just so it meets the edges of our wall there. Nice, about there. Now you can see we're starting to set up the floor of our background here. We're just gonna give this one segment to its width and height. Hit C. Grab our edge here, apply that zero offset on the extrude, jump into our camera and you can see we just need to pull this up a little bit 
just so it's meeting the bottom of our door there. Just this, this is going to finish off our floor. Now to make this nice and simple for us, we're gonna cheat this a little bit. We're not gonna worry about the curve of our roof here. So I'm just gonna grab that edge again, hit D for extrude, apply it, and what I'm gonna do is just pull this up beyond, beyond our foreground view. So this is gonna capture all that image data, but without worrying about that, the curves of the roof. We're just gonna make this nice and simple for us. So with that up beyond our view, what I'm gonna do is dive back out of our camera here, spin around and grab all the edges here on our left side and I'm gonna pull them across and I'm gonna do the same with our right side and you can see now we're capturing all that background information but really simply and without worrying too much about the curves and contours of the actual building. And now you can see if we jump back into our camera and I hit render, we've now got our image back. And this look, this is nice, this is a good start. What we, what, we don't actually want to damage the image, we wanted it to hold up its integrity and that's what we've done. We've managed to keep this looking like the original image, but now that we've set up this scene, we're gonna add some objects into it and really start having some fun. Now, like in the reference shot you saw, we had some objects come flying in through these bottom doors and then back out the window at the top. So first up, let's add these doors in. So I'm gonna grab our knife tool again here, making some cuts on both edges of the doors and also in the middle, and then just at the top as well here. Now what I'm gonna do is grab our polygon selection tool and grab one of these doors at a time and then I'll hit right click and go split. And you can see that's created a new plane for us and now with our mouse in the viewport with that original plane selected, I can just hit delete because we don't need that in the original model anymore because we've already split that door. So we'll just do the same with the second one here, split it, delete it off the original and now we've got these two doors here separate from that original background. So what I'm gonna do here is copy that texture tag and apply it to both of our planes. And then what I'm gonna do is right click onto that texture tag and say Gen generate UVW coordinates. So we'll just rename these quickly for us, tidy this up and then I'll show you what that's just done for us. We just need to fix where our axis of this geometry is here. So I'm gonna grab our axis tool, jump into our views here you can see we just need to pull this back so it's in the same position as our door. And what this is gonna do is work as our hinge. So let's put this right on the edge there where it's gonna bend from. And while we're in this view, we'll do the same for our right door. Pulling that axis down and sliding that over to its far right position. And now when I turn that axis selection tool off, you can see now when I rotate this geometry, the image is sticking to it. We're no longer just projecting onto this geometry, we've assigned it, and that's really cool. You can see I've done the same thing with our top panels here. We can rotate these, and it's just a way to give more depth to your image. So you can see now that we're back into our view, the background is now still projected. So we can just turn that off so we don't see through the door there. But what we're probably gonna to need to do is create a little bit of geometry outside, just so when our objects come flying through, they've just got something to work with. So let's make this room up. Let's grab ourselves a plane, another plane. Let's drop it as a chart of our background so we can reset its position so it's at the exact same spot there. I'm just gonna scale this out. This is gonna form that little background, a little bit of a room for our objects to come flying in from. So I'm not being too particular here. I'm just gonna give ourselves a bit of a floor. And I think all we'll need now is a bit of a backdrop as well, just so, just so we've captured everything our camera's gonna see through those doors. Nice, and that's pretty much gonna do it for us. I think that's nice and simple, nice, easy setup. Now, when I rotate these doors, we're seeing that new little room we've just created. Now, this is another cool trick I got taught recently. Now, because we're gonna be rotating these doors and we might make some other moves and we don't wanna to have to keep undoing to get them back to their original position, we can grab both of our doors here and you can see the X, Y, and Z position of each of them are completely different. 
But what we want to do is freeze these coordinates so that whenever we make another change, we can just then zero them out. So I'm going to select them both, come down to freeze coordinates, and I'll just say apply all. And now you can see this zeroes out its position and remembers that initial state. Now comes the fun part of adding those bald balloon things we saw at the start come flying through those back doors and out the top through the windows. Now what we first need to set up here is a bit of a path that our objects are going to take. We want to send them on a journey and we want to dictate those movements. So what I'm going to do is dive into our top view and I'm going to grab the sketch tool. I think this is a bit of fun. It's a great way to just freely draw and create some nice organic shapes for us here. And this is going to be the path that our object takes. I'm going to come through the back window here, come flying around the room and then exit back out that door through the base there. But you can see we're not, we haven't quite got this all positioned correctly. We're not coming out of the door. So what we need to do is grab our point selection and we're just going to rotate these points, move them around a bit, create a nice organic movement, but make sure ultimately we exit through those doors at the base there. Just moving around our scene, making sure that we've got this set up in a nice position for us and we're happy with the movements this is going to take. Nice, we're coming right out through the middle of those windows there. I think that's going to look really cool coming towards the camera. It's going to group our two, two planes that we've created here and we'll just, call, we'll just call that outside just so we can tidy this up a little bit. Now to help set us up a little bit here, what I'm going to do is apply a dynamics tag to each of our objects within our main structure here. And what I'm going to tell them to be is to be a static mesh. This just means dynamic objects will bounce off them, but these objects themselves won't move around. They're just going to be a static mesh. So what do we want? Let's just make this really simple and we'll grab ourselves a cube. I'm just going to position it near the door to make sure we're at a scale that ultimately it's going to be able to pass through this. So as a, at default, this is looking pretty nice. This is looking like a good scale of something that's going to be able to come flying through these doors. I'm just going to zero out that sphere position again, turn off our main structure for a second, and let's just concentrate on this little cluster of objects we're going to have flying through this scene. So I'm going to drop that sphere into a cloner, and what I'm going to tell it to be is to be a grid array. But we're going to make this quite small. We're just going to make it nice and simple, nice and easy to come flying through here. You can see I can just increase this count and it'll start generating more spheres into that grid alignment. So what we're going to do is apply a dynamics tag to our cloner. We're going to tell it to apply to all. And then we'll just come over to our force and give it a bit of strength in both its follow position and follow rotation. And you can see now when I hit play, these will bounce around and start interacting with each other. And this is pretty cool. Now what we'll do, we'll, with our cloner selected, let's go to our MoGraph effectors and, in, and give ourselves a bit of a random effector here. And what we're going to do is affect the scale. You can see it's not updating in our viewport, so let's just, zero, let's just go back to frame zero. And you can see by having absolute scale and the uniform scale selected, we're not going beyond our original size here. And that's good because we've already figured out the max size that we want to come through this door. So we just want to create some smaller ones with it as well. Now what I'm going to do with our cloner selected, go to our tags and give it an align to spline tag. Let's give ourselves a few extra frames here. So what I'm going to do at frame zero, I'm going to give it 0% of its position and then we'll come all the way to frame 200 and give it 100% of that position. And you can see now when I hit play, these balls come flying through the scene and you can see they're already starting to interact with a few of the objects in our main structure here because although they're not visible, they are dynamic, but you can see we've got these balls flying along our path and this is looking pretty cool. So let's turn back on our main structure and you can see what's going on here. So the balls come flying through. At the moment, those doors don't open up, so they're just smacking it against that background and come and sliding off to their, to their resting spot. So what do we need to do? Let's open up our doors here right about the time we want these to come flying through. So what we're going to do to make these doors open is just some really basic keyframe animation. So... I'm just going to add a keyframe into the original position and all we're going to keyframe here 
is its rotation. Let's open these doors up here and I'm just going to do the exact same on on both our left and right door here. And now you can see we've got we've got them keyframed at the original closed position. The balls come flying through and they open up just in time for those balls to come flying out. Maybe this animation is going a little bit quick, so let's add a few extra keyframes here and just slide along our final position of our clones along that spline. And let's see what we've got now. And you can see I'm just amending our count of our spheres here within that cloner just to add a few extras. Maybe that's looking a bit better. You can see now our doors are opening up too soon to account for the spheres now. So maybe that was a little bit slow. So let's grab that final keyframe and maybe, maybe around 300 will be a better speed for us. What I'm thinking is we can lose a couple of the points of the end of off the end of our spline here, just so just so they sort of finish just outside our doorway. Now let's have another look at that. Balls come flying through the front window here. Maybe it's still a little bit slow. They're not moving around a whole heap, and they're not all managing to escape through the door. Then you can see they're just intersecting with the the walls downstairs a little bit. So let's grab both these doors and first up what I'm going to do is just move our keyframes along here just so they're not opening up quite as quickly. And what I can also do is just add a few extra keyframes of where, of where we want our spheres to be on the timeline. And what we can do, we can just slow them up a little bit as they're coming through those doors just to give them just to give them a bit of extra time to settle and hopefully they'll all come out. Maybe what we can do is dive into our spline here and just further amend that end position because you can see they're trying to, you can see they're trying to slide across our wall here based on the position of our final point. So maybe by moving that along to align with our doorway a little bit better, that'll help with our animation. All right, that hasn't quite worked for us. It's given us something a bit funky. But look, you guys are getting the idea of how quickly we can add some extra elements to our scene here to give us a completely different look. And we can increase this count of our cloner to create something really kind of cool and create something really fun. Now, in the final piece, I think we had them coming the other way through the, through the doors at the bottom there, coming flying towards the camera. So let me show you how we're going to set that up. Let's remove our keyframes and add a keyframe at frame zero at 100% of our position. Let's come forward a few frames here and zero out that position and add another keyframe. And see, so we're going to need to slide those keyframes along for our doorway here, just so they're right at the start, because we're going to need these open up nice and quickly for us. And you can see we're getting a few spheres there getting caught behind the doorway. And you can see that's because of the position they're rotating. So we're just going to have to dive into our doorway here and just amend those keyframe positions. So I've got our left doorway here selected. You can see I've got both our keyframes. So I can just come over to that final resting keyframe pull up our rotation tool and just rotate this so it's opening up the other way, add another keyframe and then I'll overwrite that previous one. Let's do the same with our right doorway here, coming forward 30 frames, rotating our door so it opens inside, add a keyframe and then I'll overwrite that and now we've got our doors opening up towards us to allow for our spheres to come flying through here. Now what we can also do is grab all of our dynamics tags on our objects within our main structure here. And I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a size increment. And what this is gonna do 
is help with those spheres not intersecting as much with our geometry. So you can see now we've got those spheres bouncing in through the doorway there, intersecting with the ground and coming flying towards the camera before going out the window. And what's really cool is we can come in here and completely change our spline. And what this is gonna do is completely change our animation and, and where these balls and spheres are flying within our scene. So maybe move this over a little bit, they'll come flying through, bit of a sharper turn perhaps, bouncing with the ground. This could look quite nice. So let's jump into our camera. Let's have another look at what we've got here. So that's kind of cool. What I think we've got here is far too many spheres for our scene. So I'm just gonna dive into our cloner and just decrease this count. Give us a nice simple setup. And let's have another look at that. And you can see our spheres are really spaced apart here and they're not bouncing off each other and it's looking a bit bizarre. So let's go into our cloner and you can see that's because of our size here. So let's just zero out our size and all these spheres are now gonna try and be in the exact same position and create a little cluster for us. So they come flying through and flying back out the back door here. And this is cool, we've got this bouncing, interacting with those doorways that we created earlier, interacting with our shutters on our window and our foreground, and we've created a whole heap of depth just in this photo, and we can still, and it's still super manageable, and we're creating some really custom looks here. We can still amend this spline, creating completely different track every time. Maybe we want this to interact a little bit more with one of our front shutters here. So what we can do is just reposition some points on this spline a bit, just so they're coming a little bit closer. All right, thanks guys. I hope you had a bit of fun. I think this is a great technique for making some quite complex scenes, but making them really easy. You can see how easy this setup was to create. We just used some primitive shapes from within cinema, did some really basic modeling, and we were able to create a really cool scene but still holding up the integrity of that original photograph. All right, thanks guys. I'll see you again soon. Cheers. Thanks guys, hope you can take something away from it and I'll see you, uh, see you again real soon. <laughs> that was a bit sad. <laughs>